Olubomi Tunji Ojo is a Nigerian politician, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. Before his advent into politics, Olubomi Tunji Ojo was an accomplished business and management executive with a flourishing career in ICT and consultant services. Becoming the CEO of a leading indigenous ICT consultant company in Nigeria at the age of 24, this is no easy fit if you ask me, but let us meet the face behind the name. Good day, sir, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a bit about your background and journey that has led you to your current role and expertise? Thank you very much. As you rightly said, um, my name is Olubomi Tunjojo and um, I'm a management and ICT consultant. And um, obviously from the word go, I always had interest in technology interest in solving complex solutions and probably that's what led me into studying electronics and communication engineering in the university of north london now london metropolitan university and um, with a master's degree in digital communication and networking and of course um, further studied at um, the royal britannia academy where i became a certified ethical hacker at the age of 24 you know, and Obviously, starting an ICT company, leading an ICT company called Matrix IT Solutions Limited when I was 24 years old. And as I then started consulting for agencies like JAMP, agencies like Petroleum Technology Development Fund, agencies like uh, Commission for Mass Literacy, agencies like um, Sovereign, a couple of so many agencies in Nigeria, and of course within the private sector. And obviously, in 2009, um, we broadened the horizon and brought in um, a consulting firm called New Planner Projects Limited. And um, the company, basically, um, we, con we consulted for National Fee, Sargo Census Board, Nigeria Survey Investment Authority, the World Bank, uh, NMPC, Ministry of Petroleum, a couple of big organizations. and. Um, had our exploits in the private sector, you know, before um, the call for national service came, you know, in 2019, you know, becoming a member of the House of Representatives in 2019 and um, becoming the chairman of the House Committee on Niger Delta Development Commission. And in 2023, when, I mean, um, the mandate was renewed by the people of my constituency in Apoko North East, Northwest Federal Congress of Ondo State. And one election, one hour election was a landslide uh, margin showing the confidence that our people have in our performance in office. And in July, just um, a month after um, the inauguration of the 10th Assembly, you know. I was um, nominated, graciously nominated by Mr. President, President Bola Tinobu, as a Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And today, to the glory of God, at least the Senate has confirmed such as a Minister of the Federal Republic. So please tell us, what are the key values and qualities that represent Olubumi Tunji Ojo's personality and expertise? Well, I'll say I leave by three codes. Number one, Excellence number two. Um, excellence is my number one in life because whatever you do, you have to aim for it. You have to be the best in what you do. You know, you must always continuously challenge yourself. You must be in an endless pursuit of, be of bettering, you know, yourself and being in a better state in terms of your, your your career, in terms of your life, you know. So it's a continuous thing. You must never, you can't afford, and that's what I've lived by, never afford to be, um, to be satisfied, you know, with, with the ordinary, you know, a bit of extraordinary is needed to make a difference in life. And that's one thing that has really helped my career. And number two, of course, is diligence, you know, because no matter how good you are, no matter how talented you are, you need to be very diligent, you know, you need to be committed, you need to put in your best, because um, as they always say, you can't give what you don't have. But sometimes if you have it, and you're not diligent enough to give it, you might not be able to give it. So 
obviously diligence and the third one basically is attitude you know attitude is everything your attitude determines your altitude and i can say in life the attitude towards um my career has been sheer professionalism nothing other than professionalism and that's why in um in in my career of over two of close to two decades i can say very clearly that professionally we've been up there because we have the right attitude you know that it's needed to 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 excel could you highlight some of the major accomplishments of or milestones of your career so far yeah like what i said um the most important one for me and i will tell you is obviously being elected by your people you know the people reposing confidence in you not once but twice you know in quick succession it's it's a, it's a remarkable one and i say this very clearly i think across the country in 2023 i had the highest percentage of victory you know in nigeria i had close to 90 percent of the total vote of my people that's for a second term. That shows confidence in what we, what we, you know, were accomplished. And when you consider where I come from, the two local governments and the two local governments, there's this history. Traditionally, I mean, we rotate the House of Reps every four four years. But uh, to the glory of God, when I wanted the second term, my people actually said no. We're just, we're just me. Um, the zoning or the rotation where well, we're going after performance that shows that um, and of all the 23 words I won all the 23 words I won everywhere and more than I, almost 90 percent of the total word. that alone is a major milestone for me because it's not about getting into public office it's about it's about your legacy it's about what you do it's about what people will always remember you for it's about making a difference in the lives of people it's not about making promises it's about ability to keep your word and ability to be able to surpass expectations of people and that's what i think in the last four years you know we've been able to do in our constituency and again in ending this as a first time member I, I, in 2019 I was graciously appointed by Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Miller, the then Speaker of the Night Assembly as, um, as Chairman House Committee on NDDC. And I told him that it's called to service, you know, I'm going to bring, I was going to bring my professional uh, expertise, you know, into, in, into public life. And he gave me all the backings and all the support. And I'll tell you, for the first time, before I became chairman, NDDC, they were in a rented apartment for more than 20 years. You know, this was a commission with budget of hundreds of billions every year. Yet for 20 years, they, they were unable to finish a headquarter building. But today, under my watch as um, um, the committee chairman, we were able to push them, we were able to do the need for provide appropriation and all the necessary support for them. Today they are in their own headquarters in Port Harcourt. The SPU base, one of the best in Nigeria today, is in Port Harcourt, was done. A couple of projects and things were done, forensic and a lot of things that, that we were able to, to bring, you know, into full. We brought a bit of um, it, it, we, we brought a, a, a lot of finance, you know, into the administration and workings of the company. So the, basically, I think the highlight is wherever I get to, wherever I find myself, making a difference, you know, doing something that counts so that posterity and history can be kind to me as it has always been. All right, sir. From our conversation so far, you seem like a very hands-on person. How do you stay inspired and how do you continue to be innovative in your field? Well... Um, innovation is a product of um, of constant uh, of constant research. That's number one. You know, you like in life, you you, you have to always do a copier review. You know, I've got God has blessed me with a lot of brilliant people. You know, and I, I'm always ready to learn. You know, because the day you stop learning, you start dying. You know, so I learn a lot, I read a lot, and I, I'm always, as I said earlier, in continuous pursuit of um, excellence. I challenge myself and try to find solutions to not issues. So basically, it's a matter of um, being ready to learn and knowing fully well that problems in life, as I always say, at infinitum, <laughs> will always continue. And you must also continue to find lasting solutions to, to, to such problems. So, sir, um, let's talk politics a little bit. 
Can you describe a particularly challenging situation that you have faced in politics? <laughs> well, I think that uh, it's going to be the same answer, you know, for any young man in politics. You know, obviously, um, coming into politics from a professional background, you know, it's always seen as um, it's always a problem, problem of perception. You know, people. It's basically a perception problem, you know. But um, but um, with patience and uh, humility and the right attitude, you can always surmount all hurdles. So, and I think that has worked for me. What advice would you give to youths looking to succeed in Nigeria as against seeking greener pastures in foreign countries? Well, the same advice I gave myself in 2006 when I moved back to Nigeria. Nigeria is work in progress. Nigeria is a land of opportunities, and Nigeria is, um, is a fertile ground where when you plant the right seed, you know, there's no limit to what you can harvest, you know, and um, it's just about identifying opportunities and plugging into such opportunities. So for me, um, this is where you can be whatever you want to be. You know, I was in the UK, I had a fantastic life. I mean, I was an IT person, an ethical hacker at a tender age, you know, but I decided to come back to Nigeria to start something and I've never regretted it. And also, we must also understand that our population is a massive asset for us. So it's about being able to critically analyze the demographics, analyze the population, analyze the needs of the people, the wants of the people, and look at opportunities in the era, in, in this era of um, information technology and see where you can tap in. So I think that um, uh, the youths have massive, they, they, they have, there's a massive opportunity, you know, and especially with the new president, Paul Ahmed Tinubu, who from, you can see his economic plans, is about uh, market liberalization, it's about uh, creating opportunities, investor friendly, you know, environments to, that, that will enable productivity. So I believe that um, it's not going to be business as usual. The youth will have the right support that, uh, that they need to succeed economically, financially, and even entrepreneurship-wise, you know, but it's about them identifying areas to plug in. And I believe if that is done, the sky can only be the stepping stone. Okay, sir, so um, finally, before I let you go, earlier on you said you came back from the UK to Nigeria in 2006. Yeah. And I, I believe for you to move back, there definitely was a dream. So I want to throw this question to you. What would you say is the ideal Nigerian dream? Or what should be the ideal Nigerian dream? The ideal Nigerian dream to me is equality, equity, and of course, a lot of opportunities. <laughs> you, you keep saying opportunities, but yeah. I, I believe some youths will argue with you and say there are no opportunities. No, no, no. There's, there are always opportunities everywhere. It's about ability to create them. That's the truth. That is the truth. You create opportunities, you look for opportunities, and ability to identify opportunities will determine how far you go in life. A country of over 200 million people, there are opportunities. If you talk about um, friendly environment, you know, to tap into such a place, yes, we can say, yeah, we're not, that, we're not there yet. But of course, it's work in progress. That does not mean there are no opportunities. We'll send people become some something and somebody in Nigeria from nowhere. It's all about opportunities, you know, and understanding fully well that in any economy in the world, it is the private sector that drives the economy, not the public sector. That's number one. And number two, you must understand that the MSMEs are responsible for driving of any economy of any country. So, ability for us to be able to critically invest, critically encourage our MSMEs, give them a lot of support, logistic support, financial support, and knowledge support, because there's so many people into businesses today that they need a lot, they need even more of, of knowledge support than financial support. And that is the truth. You understand? So, if we're able 
to do this. I, I believe the, the opportunities and the youths will definitely, I'm a youth, you know, and I, I started, like what I said, at 24, you know, and I was about 24 when I started. And and I, I when all my mates in UK, all my mates, my friends, my friends precisely decided to stay back. I was one of the few that decided to come back. But today, do I have regrets? No. I mean, it was about risk. But we thank God today that at least it's worth it. All right. Thank you very much for your time, sir. You're we most welcome. It. You're most welcome. Thank you.